<laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Wonderful oh my God. to see you. Or Jen, I should say. You go by Jen, right? Yes, it's so great to see you too. Thanks so much for asking me to do this. So you were one of my final soloists uh, with the Rock Valley Symphony before we closed down. And it's amazing that uh, because of, you know, it was, a, it was a wonderful week, memorable week, but it still feels so, um, uh, so it, the memory is so lively still in my head because there's just, you know, there was not that much that happened since on, <laughs> on this end, um, but you also, you know, you were fantastic. I left a great impression here. So uh, thank you, you. It was such a pleasure. Oh my gosh, you have such an amazing orchestra and it's like beautiful musicians and incredible people. And it was such a blast to work with you also. Oh, thank you. And of course, I will never forget, uh, you are so far the only soloist, um, and I want to encourage others to do that, who after um, playing a, a very demanding concerto, actually sat in the orchestra in the second half and played the symphony with us in the second half. That was amazing. What a, what a treat. Oh, well, thank you. That was a blast for me, too. I felt like by the end of the week, I felt like I was like good friends with your horn section because they were so welcoming and just so inviting and warm and amazing. So, yeah, it was it was a real blast. They are really wonderful people, but I've, and I've never seen them happier than that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good horn love kind of weekend. <laughs> oh. Yeah, horn players don't get to play concertos very often, so it's it's very special whenever we do. So you recent recently listened to the recording uh, that uh, yeah, and you're still <laughs> okay. I hate to go back and listen to to what happened. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty nervous, and yeah, I mean, of course, it's like French horn is not an instrument where we're ever perfect. So I was like, oh come on, man, you know, <laughs> then a couple yeah. things, but. It was just, it actually reminded me exactly of what a special week it was and what a sweet experience it was. And yeah, I think like the whole music world and music loving community is like missing this live collaborative thing. Yeah. And we're all trying to be so creative and like do what we can do. And like, I love all the stuff you guys are putting out. It's amazing. Um, I mean, it's great to like, you know, try to do what we can during this time. But yeah, I mean, we're gonna just be so happy to actually get back to real oh, life. Yeah. Real collaborative artistry so it's so true and everything we do now i feel like it re really requires an extra effort but uh, there is a huge dividend because there are, are people who love um the music that we play they're really uh, deprived they're really hungry for it and uh, and also we just you know we provide such positive value with our with our music it takes you places and uh, you know lift, lifts off the you know, lifts the soul and the anxiety stays somewhere in a, you know, in the back room and uh, we forget about the world for a while. So yeah, it is good that way. Yeah, I felt very grateful that people actually, um, yeah, like miss the art form and also the, the musicians that I've seen that are trying to kind of bring some really beautiful good into the world with music, especially right now since stuff is really tough. So yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful opportunity, actually, for artists of all kinds, which is neat. Yeah, and also a sort of a, um, we have a chance to change the paradigm, uh, whatever that means. But um, we're yeah. out of that churn of daily uh, work. And so something good comes out of it, right? <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, I think a lot of thoughtfulness is going to come of it. Yeah. No, I think everyone's rethinking everything. And I think, um, I mean like an art form like classical music has been around so long that like it's probably easy for us to get stuck in just always the way that we've always done it but there's ways that we could shake things up and be more creative and more interesting and I mean I think it is going to be good for the field and there will certainly be a lot of gratitude on all sides of like oh this is nice once we're back to it so yeah it is exciting I think yeah so how long did uh, the Philadelphia Orchestra take to figure out how to operate uh, under these conditions and what I mean is uh, um, how long did it take for you to to get together with your colleagues and are you able to perform as a whole group or are you, are you doing you're doing chamber projects or what's the scope of things you do uh, these days? 
Yeah, I mean, I think um, every orchestra is obviously doing different things, as we all know. But um, yeah, Philly did a bunch of virtual projects for the spring and summer. They kind of, they actually invited us as kind of like an open call, like anything you want to play in like a layered format with other people, feel free to do that. So a bunch of us did those things like solo pieces or with piano or, you know, like a, a chamber group or whatever, where you would just kind of like send your, like you would record a part and that you know a, sec a section or a movement of something and then send it to your colleagues and they'd record and listening to you and then the audio engineer would would like layer it so basically like pretty interesting collaborative things uh. that way for a while and then yeah and then they took like maybe a month or so at the end of the summer and kind of regrouped and said okay like coming soon we're going to do something live mm -hmm. you just need to figure out the safety logistics of it so we went to our outdoor venue in philly which is called the man center and they were great they just they they made it all really clean and our management was <laughs> really professional about it all it was super um, impressive and yeah so we all got tested for every single week but basically from september until january 20th we recorded um over the course of that time we would record for like a week or two at a time and then we'd be dark for a couple weeks and they would they would have us record we essentially recorded an entire season's worth almost an entire season's worth of music Wonderful. during that time so it was very the full accelerated yeah fabulous no it was like two oh, awesome. it was like 45 okay yeah i think we have i think we have a max of like 50 or so that have to, you know that are allowed to be in a certain square footage in Philadelphia, just safety reasons. So I think they had to cap us at a, at 45, and so it was all like chamber orchestra stuff or Siegfried Idol or Dvorak Serenade or like yeah. you know kind of a lot of new music, a lot of female composers and composers of color and like really cool neat new stuff and a lot of like really beautiful things that we never get to play like Haydn symphonies and some Schubert yeah. and Beethoven. Um, it was nice, like Mendel. And then, yeah, so you done a lot of uh, yeah. conductorless uh, performances, or was it always with a conductor? It was always with conductor unless it was a quintet. And that was because we did the plexiglass and like 10 to 15 feet of separation. So yeah. our strings were all masked the whole time yeah. Yeah. and the winds were very far apart. So we had a hard time actually hearing each other. So and it's not like, um, it's not the cleanest and most together we've ever played, but it's actually very emotional playing, which is because everybody's just so happy to be there. Yeah. But yeah, so they've been streaming it on like every weekend we stream it um, online. So people can listen to it for like a week or something. So oh. yeah, it like it works. Yeah. Yep. So. You get used to it, right? Yep. People were saying, well, how are you going to play with, you know, you will have to adjust to the different distances. Well, yeah, musicians adjust. That's what we do, right? I mean, it's going to, after a while, your brain kind of rewires a little bit. I mean, it's not ideal, uh, but, but it's, you know, it's better than you would, you know, you would uh, fear, <laughs> I think. So, yeah well yeah. it really does mirror like yeah, i totally agree like you get used to whatever it is that you are being asked to do and it definitely mirrors sort of the resilience of the universe right now in terms of like okay well this is annoying but it's okay like it's better than nothing it's better than being at home and missing getting to play with people so okay let's like enjoy this so i think i saw a lot of people looking around and kind of smiling at it you know like you could see yeah. like smiles in people's eyes and kind of you know so it's like yeah there's there's some some nice things in there we'll never take it for granted so i know right <laughs> what i would like to know so you're there with your instrument and you tell me that you were just practicing uh so where there did you take a time off like during the hard lockdown were there days when you did not touch the horn you can tell me i will not share it with anyone except of yeah. all rogue valley symphony patrons <laughs> <laughs> there you go uh <laughs> No, I think every, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking every musician took a couple of days off here and there. Um, yeah, I actually, I felt like during the spring, I felt very busy and um, very compelled to like keep things going and very active for my students. Mm 
-hmm. Like I have a bunch of Curtis and some at Juilliard. I was doing a lot of extra projects and master classes and teaching and everything. So I was kind of on a roll. Like once everything closed down, I was like, oh no, but now we have to make it okay for all these college students and all these high school kids and all these like young adults who are supposed to be out there taking auditions and playing gigs and don't have any of that and are asking for lessons. So like I kind of, I was on a roll for a while and doing these extra chamber projects and stuff. And then I think it was around June, I think when I hit a wall. I was like, oh, this is really depressing. (laughs) So I kind of wallowed for a little while there and kind of, you know, I played a little bit, but I kind of, I felt like I also needed to process just everything that was happening. I think I was sort of shutting it out. (laughs) So yeah, I've been trying to tell my students, like, if you need a moment, yeah, if you need a moment to like feel something, like it's going to come out your bell eventually in the form of like love or compassion or understanding or like greater emotion. So it's like, I don't know. I think it's probably healthy to take a break when your mind is telling you you need to or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it was but, uh, very interesting for me to see how people reacted differently. Some people went into a kind of a depressive state right away. And some people went like hyper and, and then, you know, a few months later, it just kind of, they, they had their moment of reckoning, I suppose. Yeah. But I think, yeah, we yeah. all kind of the magnitude of the situation, you know, sometimes you got to have a little distance from it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel that way as well? I, what, what did I feel? I don't know what I, I, yeah, I guess I went through all the stages of grief several times. I mean, disbelief. I saw recently some emails um, that we were exchanging here in Rock Valley Symphony. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, like in March or so. And, the, and that's, what, that's when it dawned on us, on us that we will not have any live performances uh, in front of the audience that year in 2020. And I was absolutely just shattered. I said, that's impossible. I can't imagine, you know, and here we are. <laughs> In 2021, it's just, it became a reality. It's amazing. Oh, anyway, on a happier note. So do you do any um, in-person teaching or is it all Zoom for you? It's mostly all Zoom. Um, Juilliard has a little bit more of an open policy at the moment um, than Curtis does. Curtis is closed and is virtual only, and they're asking us not really to do anything in person just to keep everything safe and above board. Um, Juilliard is like, um, is a little, they're inviting people to teach a little bit in the school, which I haven't done yet. But what I have done is done some outside with my students, which is really fun, actually. <laughs> and um, so yeah. we've gone to various like parks. And um, I finally set up my little roof deck here in Center City, Philly, so that there's a good like 12 feet in between us. So it's like, it's fine as long as they, yeah, I, I wear a mask while they play and they wear a mask yeah. while I play and we're outside. And, but it's like, I get my neighbors who are like, hey, sounds good up there, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like again, with people being starved for live music, it's like the minute that you're playing in a park, people are like, hey, that's really nice. What song is that? And yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. she's preparing for her master's audition. So that's the first movement of the Mozart horn concerto. And they're like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know? oh, that's like, really lovely. That's that's exactly, we don't have time for that, right? I mean, this circumstances uh, force you to do that, but then you really are doing an outreach. Like you're, you're making this music available to people who would normally not uh, find their way to a concert hall. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it's all very random because who really needs to hear a French horn playing by themselves on a sidewalk? But, you know, it's all fun. <laughs> like, people oh. are very good natured about it. <laughs> oh, so so you be, it sounds like you have been plenty busy throughout this. Uh, this it just, yeah, yes. never stops, right? And you say very you're lucky. Yeah, no, I'm very lucky because, yeah, I mean, education is a big deal and you're right, like outreach is, is exciting and we have time to do some things that we didn't have quite as much time for, so. Yeah. And you're, you're helping your kids with, uh, with their schooling, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty fun little challenge. I'm not as patient as I thought I was, yeah. so <laughs> it's pretty humbling, actually. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, but yeah, no, they're great and they're seven and eight now and they're super cute and it's, uh, my oh, nice. son is learning how to read like quite well so that's actually pretty exhilarating to get him like get to see him kind of get over the hump you know yeah so, yeah yeah it's really nice yeah. and you get to spend probably it's more time yeah you get to spend more time with them that's that's yeah all right so Absolutely. When, do you, when do you think when uh, when does philadelphia orchestra i think they will return to um to live performances 
do they have a deadline or they were um, yeah they're trying to figure out whether we can do some stuff in may mm -hmm. i think we were going to try to do um kind of like the super bowl with their uh inviting frontline workers to the mm -hmm. to the game who have been vaccinated i think we're going to try to do that um in may i think there's going to be a gala performance which maybe is streamed and then oh, um and then oh. a live like will it be yeah it would be probably in the hall nice Wonderful. i think it would be inside i i think we're trying to figure out Oops, I'm so sorry. They're trying to figure out the um, the details on that. Yeah. So hopefully it will be inside. Um, but yeah, so, and then in the summer, I think we're gonna try to do some socially distanced stuff in the summer outside um, and maybe Vail and the Man Center nice. and maybe Saratoga. Huh. So our three like summer homes, hopefully we can do it. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. So yes, and I can't wait to and hear that Rogue Valley is up and going too. Well, thank you. Yeah, not 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 soon enough, right? And this pandemic also robbed me of an opportunity to present you uh, in Queens. We had a date there, and that was in June. But that's still it's a, just a delayed gratification for me. So, <laughs> oh, I really hope we can do that too. Oh my gosh, I'd love to get to work with you again. Oh gosh, thank you so much, Jen. Well, our hearts are full of of, of uh, what you what you brought us here still so, so you know such a long time but uh but again it's it's just it feels like a blink you know in in a way and uh so thank you so much and uh, well likewise it was one of the most special musical experiences i've ever had and it really is due to the the kindness and warmth and just like what a beautiful orchestra you have in all ways so it's okay. uh, well, something I'll we'll be grateful for forever. Let's do a repeat sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That'd be amazing. All right. Thank you for finding time and uh, have a wonderful evening. All the best. You too. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Take care.